Over the last few weeks, I've had several people ask me about doing more basic CSS topics, and I thought I'd start today with covering some selectors. Now you can see here I've got an HTML page, it's linked up to this style sheet, and here's the page that we'll be manipulating. Now down below, I've got a list of selectors I want to cover in this video, some of which are obviously very, very basic, and then we go to some more advanced ones that even if you're writing CSS a lot, you may not be using. All right, you ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. There should be a link in the description to a code pen so you can follow along with all of this, but you'll see here that we're gonna be manipulating this page and at the bottom here is where all the selectors that we'll be talking about are listed. Now, if you're interested in this video and you enjoy it, let me know in the description. I'm happy to follow it up with a more advanced selector uh, video, but just let me know. All right, let's go ahead and start with this basic one here, this asterisk. It selects every single thing on the page. So I could come in here and say like color, and uh, set that to red and everything should now turn to red. Now usually you use this in combination with other things so as like a, a sibling or, or like a child selector but uh, we'll talk about those in a second. I've actually already been using something like this on the page up top here for a very very basic clear. I'm taking everything including the after and before pseudo elements which we'll talk about in a little bit and setting all those to box sizing of border box. All right, back down here though, uh, that's the first thing. Second thing here is you can select any element. In this case, I have a div as an example, but we could select all the H1s and set that to color of red. Now, just a quick note that you should only ever have one H1 per page, and you see that that's what I've got here, but I could also select an H2, and now all the H2s, you can have multiples of those for each section of your page that are all turning red. So any single tag, you just write the tag, and then you can select it. You can also select things by selecting their class. So for instance, if I come up here and I find this class of paragraph, I can grab all the paragraphs like this and everything turns red. But if I wanna select only the paragraphs or only the elements that have the class of paragraph, I'll do a dot and then paragraph. And now you can see that this one evidently does not have that class, but these two do. All right, next you can select IDs. You can see here, uh, let's find an ID. Here's one, section heading three. So I can grab this right here and add it in like this. And now if I scroll down, the only one that should be red is this one right here. And that's because it has this exact ID. Now ID should be unique per page. That's the kind of the point of the ID is that nothing else on this page should share this ID. So it's the only one of its kind on the, the page it's on. So those are some basic selectors. Let's now move down to attribute selectors. Now this is where things can get pretty powerful. You can see anything with an attribute I can just surround in brackets. So for instance, I could surround this right here at this aria label. So let's do this. I'll say aria label, and now anything with an aria label gets the red coloring. You can see most things here have an aria label. This section does not, but all of these sections do. So they all get the color red. Now you can get more specific if you want. So for instance, I could say, I want it to have this exact string. So if I wanted that, I could just copy this out right here and say the aria label has to have this exact string as its value. If I come down here, this is the one right here and nothing else gets it. Now you can also say, I want it to just start with a certain string. So for instance, let's say I said anything that had an aria label that started with my, and I can do that with this caret. And now in addition to the one below that shows, you can see I've got another one that starts with my up top here. Now you could also do it the other way where you say, hey, I want it to end with something. So for instance, let's say I wanted it to end with two like this, then I could just do this and end it with a dollar sign. So dollar sign equals two means it has to end with two. You can see that this is the only one evidently that ends with two. And then finally, I can say anything that just includes a certain string, and I can do that with this asterisk. So let's do this again. And here I'm just gonna say if the aria label includes section. And now you can see I've got several of these that include section, so they all turn red. Now, I think these data attributes are really, really important to use, especially because they kind of force you into good practice, good habits when it comes to using uh, ARIA labels or other accessible tags and attributes. So for instance, usually with something like a navigation menu, you would use ARIA expanded and set that to true or false. A lot of times people also will add a class like active or something like that. But if you're using ARIA labels correctly or other uh, accessible tags correctly, you don't need to add extra classes randomly. Just use the actual semantic HTML and then use that to style your CSS. All right, so that's attribute selectors. Now you can also combine these in a bunch of different ways. So you can see here, you can do either or here. So like H2 or H3, either of those are all gonna get the the, the color red or whatever it happens to be. So let's come in here and say that all my H1s and all my H2 should be red. 
And now you can see that all of those are red. Now, if you want to combine things like a tag, like button, and a class, like btn, you can do that as well. So I'll come over here, I'll say button, and that would just select any buttons, and you can see I've got one, I've got two. But now let's say I only want the ones that also, so they have to contain both of these, have the class of btn. And that one is only this one down here. Now, you obviously have to like obey normal rules, so you can't say something has to have an h1 and an h2 tag, because it can only have one tag, but usually you combine this with something like a tag and a class. Now, I'm not going to talk about specificity really in this video, but just to note that this has a higher specificity because it has two different selectors that have to both be in agreement. And if I were to add something more, like an ID, that would even have like a more extreme specificity. So if I said like maybe a button had the idea of like something, all right, and then it was a button. So I'd probably tag this on the end. You should put the tag first, then classes and, and IDs and things like that. This is a really heavy specificity, and it would be really hard to overwrite. So I, I try to stay away from kind of using a lot of AND selectors unless I really have to, because the more specific you get, the harder it is to change later. All right, next you can have descendant selectors just by adding a space. So this isn't this is an OR with a comma. This is an AND with a dot, and a space would be something inside of it. So for instance, I could say anything. Let's kind of combine some things we've learned. Anything that has an ARIA label. I want to select all the H2s inside of that. And the ARIA label can say anything. I want to select all of those and turn them red. So now all of these sections that have an ARIA label, as long as they have an uh, H2 inside of this, you can turn it red. Now I could also change this and say, hey, I only want things with an ARIA label that also happen to have an ID of section three. Now this wouldn't be super useful because in this case, there should only be one section uh, heading three anyhow on the page as an ID. So it's always going to select this and this is kind of useless, but you could, uh, let's find something else down here. So here we go. I could say, I want all divs uh, that have a paragraph inside of them. So over here, I'd say I want a div and I want anything with a paragraph class inside. Now you can see up top here, this is the only paragraph that turns red. Now I could combine these once again and say, Hey, give me either a div or a section with paragraph. Now you might think you could just do it like this, but this is going to select any divs and also any sections and paragraphs. So this comma uh, divides them up. So I'd have to actually say div and then inside of here, paragraph. So now it's any div that has a paragraph inside of it or any section that has a paragraph inside of it. And these are classes, not just the P tags. And you can see now I've got a couple sections here, one and two. Now there is a way to compress this with like an is or a where selector, but we're not going to do that in this video. So if you know about that, that would be a better way to do this. All right, next you can actually say, hey, I don't want it to just be any descendant. I want it to be an immediate descendant. And in that case, you'd have to put this greater than sign. So I'm saying, hey, I want a div. And then I want anything with a class of paragraph that's an immediate child of that div. Now in this case, it happens to be the exact same thing as just doing a general descendant because it is an immediate descendant. So we've talked about descendant or child selectors. Now let's now talk about sibling selectors. There are two available to you. One is that general sibling selector right here. So let's come in here and grab my ULs. So I'll say anything with a UL. And in fact, let me give this thing a class and I'll call this list or something like this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is now come down here and grab just that one, just that list. And actually, let's do this. We'll do class uh, first because this will allow me to show off the siblings, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. So let's switch this out. I'm going to want the very first item, this class of first, which will give me just this li right here. Now let's select its sibling. And we can do that in a couple different ways. I can use the general sibling selector, like I just mentioned, and select anything that's an li. And now I'm saying, hey, I want the siblings to this thing. And you can see how both of these turn red. Now, if I don't know what the siblings might be, I could use that universal selector. This is, again, usually when you use it is in some kind of combination. And now I'm saying the same thing, except notice that now not just giving me the li, but it's also selecting uh, this button because it's also a sibling. Now, the way I've set up this HTML, it shouldn't be a sibling, probably. It should probably be inside of one of these li's like this. Uh, but anyhow, that's kind of beyond the point. All right, so you can see how I can combine some of the stuff we've learned to grab the general sibling of that first class. Now, I could also get more specific and say, hey, I only want the very next sibling. So in that case, I'd have to come in here and say, plus, just give me whatever's next. All right, and that's what this means right here. Now, usually you want to actually get as specific as you can get. So if I know it's an LI, I'll say it should be an LI. Now, you may be wondering, can I select something before the item? 
Well, no. Uh, general sibling just is for what's next. Uh, and the same thing with immediate sibling. What is next? Now, there are some ways to select earlier things using some more complex selectors. But again, that's beyond the scope of this first video. But again, if you're interested in that, let me know, and I'm happy to do more on selectors. Finally, let's talk a little bit about pseudo selectors. I'm just going to show you two today, which is the before and after pseudo element. And these are really pseudo element selectors, not just pseudo selectors. So this is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, let's come in here and let's grab the list. And uh, I'll just select it like this since we already created that class. Get rid of all of this. And we're going to add a before like this. Now, with the before or an after, they both work the same way, so I'll just show you before. You have to have what's called a content. And it can be empty, but you have to have something here. Let's say, for instance, I wanted it to say hello. I could do that, and you can see how now hello shows beforehand. Now, if I inspect this, and I come in here and look at this, you can see that down here in the DOM tree, I'm getting the UL right here, and then I'm getting this little colon, colon, before. This is the before pseudo element, and you can see how it's placing it directly in the DOM. And you can do other things with it. So usually you'd set this up for like some kind of decorative thing, or perhaps like you want to have like by an author's name. Instead of writing by in your HTML multiple times, you might just prefix it with something like this, by and then whatever the author's name happened to be. So maybe you come in here and say like uh, Joe Jimmy, or right? <laughs> whatever the guy's name is. And now it says by Joe Jimmy without having to manually type by every time you use the author's name. So that's one useful way to use it. Another way that people use it a lot is for decorative items or decorative things. So for instance, I might want to add something decorative before this. In that case, I'd have an empty content usually. And then I'd also usually set this to like position of absolute. And then I'd set it to like, I don't know, width of 50. Let's do the same thing for the height. And I'll set the background uh, color to like red or something. Now you can see that it shows right on top of everything else. Just a note with before and after pseudo elements, even though I didn't set a position of relative on the actual list, it will still be relative to its parent. Uh, that's just the way these pseudo elements work. But you can see how you could use this decoratively in some way. So for instance, I probably wouldn't do it exactly like this. I'd say something like with 100% height 50, and then maybe like uh, Z index, and I'd set this to negative one. All right, so now it's behind everything, and uh, that's horrible, but you can see the point. Now, a couple other things to mention about this pseudo element, the before and after pseudo element. They do have some superpowers. So, for instance, you can actually add, like, attribute selectors directly in these. So, if I came in here and I had a data attribute that said data uh, list equals, like, one or whatever. Now, what I can do is I can actually select this in here using the ATTR selector. Here, I'd grab data list. Looks like I never saved this. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now I'm getting one showing up down here. So you can only use this ATTR in contents. So I figured I'd mention it here. And now you can select any single attribute. So I could select the classes and just say, give me class like this. And then it will show whatever the classes are. So I could, if it's class of list and hi and Joe or whatever, it'll just list them all out. So you can use this for any single attribute. So it's really helpful if you have like data you want to display, but you're not sure what it is. And as you're looping through it, uh, using whatever templating language you're using, you're dropping it in these custom data attributes. And then using before pseudo elements or after pseudo elements, you can actually output them on the DOM, which is pretty cool, just using CSS. And once again, the after pseudo element works just the same, except that it puts it after the element, usually in the DOM tree. Uh, you can, of course, manipulate their positioning with position absolute or anything else, but that is how the DOM will actually display it to start with. Well, I hope this was helpful, even if you write a lot of CSS. And you can see how there's a lot of little use cases where one of these specific tools may give you just what you need at just the right time. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.